Our second matchup for today is a TVP, our only protas left also. Welcome back to Yaran, Passion and Zulla. What are you guys expecting from today? Well, as the last protas, you kind of have to win everything because everybody says protas is OP and you can't have every protas go out that early in the tournament. So you feel like you feel a bit pressure because you're the only protas left. Yeah, I have to live up to the imbalance. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jaren Passion? Why do you think there's so many Terrans in the tournament? Uh, I feel that Terrans are still the, like, the strongest race in the game, if you use them correctly. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think we got as many Zerg University players uh, here in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So both you guys just said that your race is the strongest? Kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so y yesterday, you, uh, your ambassador, you actually defeated God. Do you really think anything after that matters? Uh, I know that Silla is a stronger opponent than Jabbe, and but we'll see today who mm. gets the lead. Mm. We can look at uh, your fun facts, or your player facts. Uh, other favorite game, Dota 2. How much Dota 2 do you play? Uh, I currently play only Dota 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I play almost a few games, StarCraft 2, each week. And your favorite unit is Siege Tank, I really understand that. And uh, you've also said that you play uh, Terran because you feel like you have a, lo have a lot of options. Could you elaborate? Uh, as, as a Terran, you have several compositions to use in every game. Uh, like Mech, Sky Terran, Bio, Bio Mech, and I feel that other races does, doesn't have as many options as, as Terran. Mm. We can look at uh, Sylla's player facts. His favorite StarCraft 2 units, Dark Templar, how come? Well, I think it's the most versatile unit mm. uh, that Protoss has, because there's so much use for it more than just surprising mm. your opponent when they don't have detection. Mm. There's really, you can use it all the way from early game to late game. You also stated before that you uh, feel a bit nervous about meeting Teovide, and now you're actually, if you win this game, you are going to face him in the semifinals. How do you feel about that? I'm kind of more excited right now than I was nervous before. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Okay, time to choose maps. Please get up on the stage. All right, uh, we're taking over uh, again for the map selection as usual. What are your predictions for the maps, TVP? It's going to be really interesting with... Uh, the, it's, the map selection is going to really define what strategies they're going to, going to go for. For example, if Jaren Pash wants to play on Daybreak, yeah. I think he's going to go for some uh, big two, 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 three base aggression. Yeah. Or if he's going to go for Entombed Valley. Yes. I would also love to see Kespa plant, Kespa near plant this. I'd love to see that one as well. Uh, we're seeing Belcher Vestige here taken out quite quickly. And Cloud Kingdom. Yeah, it takes a Cloud Kingdom. It does not want to want that small map no. to... With a, Quick rush distances. Exactly. Tomb Valley taken out. Uh, I'm really surprised by Aaron Pash taking out, out in Tomb Valley since he played so well on that game, yeah. on that map last time. I was about to say that as well. And uh, Neo Planet oh. S. There it goes. Sorry, man. It would have been so fun to see that, actually. It would have. But at least Cloud Kingdom and Tomb Valley, two of the very usual maps, are taken out. And we have the first game going up on Akilon Flats by Yara Person. Scylla picks Daybreak. Uh, and Yara Person uh, picks Ohana. And uh, there's a handshake. So Akilon Flats, Daybreak, Ohana. What do you think? Uh, I'm liking this for Silla actually. Yeah. I think he, he loves to go for some big aggressive plays and those maps are all pretty good for that. Yeah. Especially, you know, Aklan Flats is such a big ramp to the natural. Yeah. It's going to be hard to bunker that up. Uh, Daybreak 2 is a great map for big approach aggression and yeah. he has had some very aggressive plays so far and I think that's, that he's going to go for that based you on the maps. You think some early, uh, really early aggression here? Not really early, no. but... Semi-early. Yeah, one or two base. One or two base aggression. Yeah, yeah um, Silla uh, seems like the kind of Protoss that likes to stay on one base, actually. Yeah. How often, how often do you see those players nowadays? Yeah, it's a lot of big, good good one of his builds. He's just a smart player that plans very well for, for the games as well. Yeah, let's check, sh check Silla again. Uh, the beautiful spin we have here. Why not? Uh, prison Break. I still don't know who that Silla person is from t Prison Break. Anyway, South Point Gaming. Have you been hanging there any? Uh, no, I'm not from Stockholm, so I haven't. No, yeah, of course you haven't. You're not from Stockholm, so you've never been there. I thought you were a gamer if you've been by Stockholm. That was a nice uh, internet cafe back in the day. But we talked about that. Yeah, Sula, uh, he likes his early pressure uh, because he has, 
he's very uh, he has very nice mechanics actually um, and talking about him playing against Jaram Persson if we pop him up, up here uh, Jaram Persson stated that he's playing a lot of Dota 2 actually as of right now and very little Starcraft that really needs to uh, that really needs to affect his mechanics yeah I think it's going to although uh, the Dota 2 is quite mechanically challenging is still going to be tough because uh, yeah it's a different type of mechanics yeah it's a different, different type of mechanics so yeah. it's going to be tough for him but the la last time he played he didn't really live so much in his mechanics but more so on his uh, great uh, on that is very smart he knows a lot about the game and yeah. you could really see that with his choice of strategies yeah that's true he's a very not knowledgeable player and uh, he's done some very good decision making all throughout these, this tournament actually so it's going to be interesting to see how he counters Scylla he needs to scout a lot to see what Scylla's going for and then try to counter that because yeah Scylla has some very nice micro and some uh, some pretty nice pushes early pushes he almost uh, at the um, he's been playing at our uh, at uh, our events earlier, him at prop dash at the first one, and uh, the same there. He tried to take him out with early aggression, and then he challenged Theovide actually at one uh, point with a proxy, proxy robo, yeah, uh, doing a nice push uh, on one base, uh, nice push onto onto Theovide's two uh, two bases with only a bunker and some marines trying to hold that. So there was a large micro long ma micro battle going there, uh, where actually Theovide managed to just last second with only uh, only. Uh, um, SCVs left, kill, the la kill off the last uh, units and turn it back, and he managed to win that because behind this he actually managed to build 1-1, uh, grab combat shields and stim at the same oh. time. So uh, he, was, uh, he was cool. He played it cool, uh, did what he had to do, pushed back and had a really nice timing coming in on the second base uh, from Scylla, uh, that Scylla took in the end of that aggression as well. So it was an interesting match, and it was a great battle, uh, a huge micro battle, and I'm I'm hoping to see more of those. We had one here just last game. That was nice. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of challenging micro. I think Scylla is really... I think it's happy with the map system we have where you get to know yeah. all three maps before the series are going to start because he's a really smart player and I'm pretty sure he knows exactly what it's going to do on each and every map. Yeah. He has his plan right, already cut out for him. Let's talk a little bit about that, that because uh, I know Suede prefers, uh, prefers looser picks. Yeah, uh, map system, and I know you pref you prefer the uh, the picking the maps beforehand, right? Yeah, yeah. What's 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 the deal with that? I think the it's better for the players to give them a chance to pre to prepare yeah. the strategies on based on the maps that are going to be played. So yeah. if you have a really good uh, build on Cloud Kingdom and Cloud Kingdom is the second map, you don't yeah. want to do the build on the first map. No, that's very true. Uh, you want, exactly, you want to do the build on the second map in that case. And actually, yeah, if you have a nice, interesting, a bit of a cheesy build for a later map, yeah. you can build that by building different types of builds uh, before that yeah, to, try exactly. to, make it, yeah, to try to make it as, as unexpected as possible. Precisely what Jaron Passion did yeah. in his last game where he went for the very early command center in the first game with a bunker in the front and then the second game he went for the exact same bunker in the front at the same timing yeah. but went for five racks in this main and just went with Alaska Man or yeah. SCVs. <laughs> Alaska Man pulled all his SCVs. In Swedish, that's everyone's gonna join. And that's, uh, that's the... Uh, Jaran Passion is the name of the previous Prime Minister. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it's a funny joke it's if you're Swedish. Story. Yeah, it's a long story. If you're not Swedish, don't care. It's, it's not that funny anyway, actually. Uh, so do you think this, uh, this get to getting to pick the pro uh, maps... Uh, Beforehand, do you think that helps Jaren Persson in this case against Scylla? I'm thinking Scylla is a little bit, a bit, a bit more, a little bit more adaptive in that way. I, th I think Scylla is uh, is better, is a better planner. Yeah. I think he has a very well cut out for him. I think Jaren Persson has kind of a plan, but not as much as Scylla. All right. But so as Jaren Persson picked Eklund Flats' his first game, I think yeah. he's going to go macro in this map. All right, that's going to be interesting to see. I would l really love to see some macro games from these two players, but I'm not sure if we're going to see that because, yeah, as we stated, Silla he likes his early aggression because he has so nicely planned out builds. He's really lining everything up for the aggression, and he's been doing very well with it so far because he's a good player that way. And with that, let's throw ourselves right into the game. And uh, I'm going to start by introducing our Protoss player down here in the lower right corner. We have our Protoss, Blue Protoss, SB Xilla. And uh, I want to see him pop out here and see... Uh, oh, uh, we have a cam down there as well. Uh, KTH, as we stated, uh, KTH Vessel. Uh, I don't know, open, far cost, I, think, I don't know how to put that. Vessel, the yeah, aerodynamics yeah. and whatnots and wherever. That's cool. Grab our Terran player. Yeah, in the top left corner, the best nickname I have ever heard in my entire <laughs> life, we have our red Terran player, Joram Persson. Bam. There we go. And uh, opening words in for, for this match. What do you think? 
I would guess that Yaron Persson is going to go for some as for some really for some macro based play while Silla is going to go for something aggressive. Yeah. But as we already see something inter interesting where Yaron Persson has sent out a very early SCV, so oh. I think it's going yeah, he's not building his twelfth SCV, so nope. this is now he builds his twelfth SCV, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be a proxy Rax, but I thought it was going to be an 11-11. So I guess it's just, just going to proxy proxy one Rax. Well, this is yeah, this is interesting. And here it goes. Uh, there's one proxy Rax over there, and uh, yeah, he's going to build the other Rax Rax at his ramp. Seems like going to pop up here. He's going to do uh, enough damage with this. Oh, this is, he's taking gas in his mains. This, this is going to be a proxy Marauder. Yep. Proxy Marauder, I think, as a, as a Protoss player, I hate Proxy Marauder. If you don't scout that, it's so hard to hold when they come in there with concussive chills. Yeah, uh, Zilla did scout his, uh, his natural, but he has no idea that the barracks is down there. Yeah. However, when he gets into the main and sees the refinery down, he is going to know that something weird is up. Yep. But he just don't, don't know what. Do you have the, do you have the money to... Uh, you don't really... You can't really afford to, to wall off the ramp with this, can you? Uh, if as, you pop down... As Terran. As Terran. Uh, no, not really, but you don't really have to either, no. I think. The thing is that, yeah, now Yaron Passion, and uh, now Sil knows that Yaron Passion is doing something strange, so yeah. he's going to go for the 7 negative score, and if I were him, I would just cut probes and get a second gate with ASAP. Yeah, I would too. I would too, to the exact same thing, actually. Um, is he going to send out a scout looking for something proxy? I'm thinking, there's another, yeah, here's, um, here's a probe running around, it checks the natural, it's going to move out to the third, uh, or the, the, the lower bottom third, and, um, then it's going to go up here, and we have the first Marauder coming out. Concussive Shells has started up. Um, what do you think? Yeah, he's going, going to go with one Marauder and two SCVs, and yeah, it's going to come down a lot of micro, obviously. If he can dad get in a bunker, it's going to be really good for him. But yeah, it's going to come down a lot of micro. Oh, and here's four additional SCVs, so it's going to be... Oh, this is going to be It's going to be tricky. six SCVs, I think, and yeah, yeah he's waiting with his first model, so it's going to be six SCVs and two Marauders versus a Sultan and Stalker, so yeah, yeah Silas so is going to have the full probes. Yeah, but he only has all, one gateway as well. Um, is that enough production for this? Uh, if it comes to the Colonel boost, it could be, but I would lo I'd love to see the quicker gateway. Now, yeah, now he's getting gateway number two. And, but yeah, Yaron Passion is pushing in. Yaron Passion is pushing in, and he has one Celad and one Stalker, and that's really not going to be after enough. He's going to need to pull these as uh, he pull his probes, and he's going to need to use them very good. Uh, so it's coming down to a micro battle here. Scylla is running in with these, and he's going to be able to take out that SCV uh, quite quickly. And he's just trying to... Um, well, Bill, uh, he's trying to take out the SCVs, of course, so that the bunker was not going to get up. And those uh, those probes have just been serving as a meat shield. There was a lot of just probes hamming around to screw up the AI of the other player, of the of the turn units. Yeah, I think Yanapash needs to focus the stock because they are doing a lot of damage to the SCVs. Yep. However, it looks like a bunker is actually going to finish, but the question is, is he going to have enough SCVs to repair it? He doesn't have focus the stalkers, and yeah, he needs to get into the bunker ACP, and he's going to Ooh, take down the stalker. Into the bunker. Yeah. yeah, this... Scylla needs to not rush the bunker. The bunker is up, so he, he can't take it down. He just needs to wait for more SCVs, but yeah, Scylla is... Yaron Pash is pushing out of the bunker, he's focusing the pylon. Yeah, and he loses another stalker here. Oh my oh, god, he's focusing the cybernetics core, this is really smart. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah, if he gets that cybernetic co the medics core out, then he can kite the Scylla's all day, uh, if that happens. Uh, in this case, yeah, you need the stalker to really do the damage uh, necessary to these marauders. And here's another bunker coming up, and this is looking really, really bad for Scylla right now. Yeah, he needs a lot of troops uh, to take out. Two, oh, and here's going with uh, all his probes and all oh. his troops. Yep, all the probes uh, have been pulled, and he needs to really focus down. He gets one Marauder down, but that big bunker is there. And it doesn't matter if he really takes it out, because the second bunker is going to finish very soon. Uh, and there's two Marauders in one, and one Marauder in the second one. And is he going to be able to take these out in time? No. These, uh, these Stalkers have all gone down. There's only probes left, and this is looking like a GG. Yeah, Yaron Passion didn't focus the stalkers really as well as he could have, but yeah, it's going to be enough because this Priscilla is out of probes and that's a GG. Yeah, there's a GG right there. And BAM! He's looking really happy there in his booth. He should be. Yeah, he had a very specific plan. Yep. Plan and out and it worked. As you talked about, yeah, uh, Scylla, well, seeing something weird is going on, that's a problem I did. That's, that's the biggest problem I think that all players do uh, when you notice something weird is up. And, you still don't plan ahead because in that case you need to cut your production. You need to prepare for something strange. But the point is you're uh, you're not sure about what's happening going on. In this case, I would have really, as in Silla's position, you would have really guessed the proxy marauder one, right? Not or what exactly. Is it? You, you you saw the uh, this was the guess. So yeah. it's going to be proxy marauder, proxy reaper, or proxy factor for maybe reactor hellions. All right. Or a siege tank. So it's one of those three, and he, he wasn't really sure. But uh, yeah. I think. 
he sh just sh should have cut probes and put down the second gateway a lot earlier, since it was a pretty late second gateway, so he just yeah. needs more gateway units earlier. Exactly. In, a, in, in any case, for any of those, he would have needed to get an earlier production up. And with one gate, it's very hard to hold that. Actually, it needs some incredible micro. And uh, Joran Persson got a, a few nice bunkers up, and uh, that really shut down everything for Silla. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and s yeah, go tweet your friends. Yes. It's really important, actually, to us. You go spread the word, UniSL. There, <laughs> there it is. is. Yeah. Go Bam. Tweet at you know, still and tweet at us if you want. Tell everybody in the world. Knock your neighbor's door. Send them in there. Spread the word. Uh, make flyers. Uh, we have something on our webpage. You can print those on your home printer uh, in black and white and throw them out of the window. Anything. Just spread the word. UniSL at, uh, at uh, Twitter. And uh, with that... Uh, Shameless plugging. We're going to throw ourselves into game number two, and I'm going to start by uh, by uh, introducing our one game down Protoss, our blue Protoss down in the lower left corner. Give it up for Xilla and the Myth de Legend, and there he is, yeah. looking as mysterious. As it, that's, it looks like a little bit. No, I'm, I'm thinking the lighting is more. Uh, it's like yeah, Bahamian the Rhapsody really video. The Bahamian Rhapsody, Rhapsody video. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. No, but it's you're too young. I'm too young, yeah. of course. But he said his favorite unit is the Dark Templar, and oh. it actually looks really mystical like a Dark Templar in this booth right there. There it is. We made it happen for him. Yeah, would you like to grab the other introduction? Yeah. As I said, my favorite nickname ever. Sending out an early SV this game, too. It's a Red Terran player, Joran Persson. The man, the myth, the legend. An early SV one more time. <laughs> is it going <laughs> to do the same thing? Uh, he's sending out a second SV, oh, so... Oh, here you go. There's two barracks this time. Yeah, no? I, th I think he's going to go two barracks with, like, without a gas and just go for... <laughs> uh, a lot of Marines and, and the SVs. I'm actually pretty surprised by this. As Why does he hate us so much? Oh, well, there's a gas coming down. There's a gas well. coming down. Okay, so th this is just a scouting SV, so it's going to be the, uh, the exactly same build, I think. Yeah. yeah it's and you don't really expect that. No. <laughs> As really wouldn't really expect that. No. Is he, why is he doing this? Is he not comfortable against Silla? I think the thing is that Silla has clear plans. Yeah, uh, okay. That's a, that's a good Silla has point. very good plans. Yeah. But if he's thrown off his game, if his plans doesn't work out as, as he would like to, yeah. he's a bit weaker. So it's like we talked about Madlisk. If you yeah. can get her out, out of, of her comfort, comfort zone, zone. Yeah. that's the important thing. And yeah, that's the tech lab going down, so it's going to be the exactly same thing. Silla now gets in, scouts the orbital and the gas, so he knows that something weird is up. <laughs> Are we going to see it? Are we going to see a quicker gateway this time? I hope. I just hope to just cut, cuts probes and put down a second gateway, yeah. or maybe even a forge. No, I don't think a forge would be smart. We're only getting two zero games, you and me. Uh, yeah. The other two costers are getting a lot of nice two one games. Yaran Persson, why do you hate us so much? We want to <gasps> cost long games, man. Yeah, I want to cost Yaran Persson. Yeah, <laughs> cost Yaran Persson, <laughs> and we got. We don't want to cost this part of Yaran Persson. There's no second gateway coming down here. Um, and he's going to throw down uh, the warp gate research again, I think. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, warp gate research is, is quite worth it, but he just needs yeah, a yeah. second gateway of as course. soon as possible. He should just throw it down right now. Yep. Uh, and he's not. <laughs> it, is he feeling comfortable in being able to hold this this time? And here we go. Here's the four workers. And he just, did he see them? With a, he moved his probe back. Did he see the four workers coming? I think he might have seen them, I'm not sure. But uh, Sela did some adaptation from the last game. He had chrono his gateway very early and now has two Sellots out. So, so the two Sellots yeah. are going to help immensely if he can get in and fight the SVs with the Sellots. Yeah, that's true. And he has his uh, Stalker, and that Stalker is going to be... Uh, here's the second gateway coming down about the same timing as last time. And there's the bunker coming up. Does he see that bunker? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he sees, he sees the bunker. Uh, and here he goes. Uh, pulls off a lot of uh, probes, probes as well. I think. And, uh, Very fine micro from Yaron Passion, taking down the Stalker immediately. Yep, and that Stalker played a real, really important role here. Uh, so it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot trickier to do this He without. needs to focus this video, building bunk. He's doing so now with the cell. Now he yep. is actually fighting the bunker. So the oh. bunk is going to go up. Uh, no, no, it's not going to be able to go up. Yeah, Pashton only has one SV here. He needs to keep this alive to finish the bunker. Oh my god, and the is that SV is going to get in there and finish the bunker? This is going to be tricky. There's a mule coming down here just for... Oh, the bunker finishes. He needs to fire yeah, and kill that. Yeah, he's with the mule. He needs to get in the bunker. But yes, he was pulling more probes. I think that's the exact right choice. And I just realized... Yeah, it's a marauder coming in. It's going for the bunker, right? Oh, and he's blocking the ramp with the probes. He managed to block the mountain. He's doing a lot of damage, but that stalker is going to go down. Probes do, does so little damage to Marauders, and the Marauders are going to get in. And I think your passion got this. Oh my God! There's two stalkers in production, but that's not enough. That's not going to be enough. Uh, he's got that bunker. He can just pu r pump right in and out, and he has that. That mule is so annoying, man. Yeah, your passion just seems 
very, very confident with this. Such an early man in you. Yeah, and if he manages to take that pylon out, this is looking very, very bad for Scylla. There's another Stalker popping out now. Um, and, well, yeah, this is looking still really bad. There's another Marauder coming in here for uh, for reinforcements. And all the st Stalkers have been taking out. Uh, he's, killed, <laughs> so he's killed nine workers here. Dude, <laughs> the um, Nexus. Oh, the Nexus. Whoa. There it is. Silatus, uh, good luck. Good luck in, in Swedish. And he's looking so happy <laughs> right there. I don't even know what, dude. You're a person, man. Why? Why would you do this to us? Uh, two quick games. Yeah, it's. It was his game plan, and it worked out exactly as he wanted to. Yeah, it did. Uh, we can't talk too much about that, but yeah, he he just uh, Silla, man. Yeah, it's the same thing as Modelisk. If you're out of his, uh, if you're out of our, our, your element. Uh, you're, get, you're getting really thrown off. Yeah, especially when you're such a player that relies on planning so much as Sil does. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would say that comparing crisis management, crisis management is one of the most important skills yeah. to have in StarCraft. Yes. And you could see Theovide yeah. in the early best of three. When he saw the siege tanks and the marines yeah. come up, he immediately pulls all his Sicilies from natural as well as takes all his marines and just goes for it before yeah. the bunk is finished. Exactly. If Scylla, I didn't th don't think Scylla's crisis management was that good. No. If he would have pulled all his probes, and it, if we would have cut probes, put down a second game really early, and this, just put a lot of probes with the stalkers, and had the had the really good micro, he could have pulled it off. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a strong build from Yaron Passion as well. If you don't scout it, I think so. I think so as well. And he seemed very confident. I mean, he's, he he scouted that twice, and he seemed really confident with it. Um, but for some reason, he didn't throw down a, an earlier. A, he seemed very confident because he didn't throw out the second gateway. He should have, I think. Uh, before we throw ourselves into the winner's interview, we're going to give a few props and a few shout-outs just for the sake of it. We're going to go over to Ina, and she represents as well Stockholm Barcroft, and we want to give them a nice shout-out because we've been spreading uh, so much of our work uh, that we've done before we had anything to really show. We managed to uh, spread through Stockholm Barcroft. You should join them on uh, Facebook as well. There's so many great debates there. Uh, there's talking about what happens, Starcraft events, we put them together here in Stockholm. So if you're a Stockholm person or a Swede in general, just pop in there and check them out. It's awesome. We want to thank uh, TOS as well, uh, the, the, the student core union, whatever it's called. The student union, union here, yeah. That. Core, yeah. I like that. It's a nice word. Uh, hardcore. Yeah, hardcore. Uh, it's a nice word. But we want to thank them so much for uh, giving us these facilities. As stated, we're on a zero money budget, so we're very, very happy to be here. And, of course, our two sponsors, Complet.se and QPad, giving us all the gear we need. And with that, let's go over and talk to Joram Persson, shall we, with Ina? Yeah, let's hear what he has to say. How about now? Okay, we'll take it again. Thank you so much for that very nice shout out. We are so happy to have you on our forum, Unicel. Okay, that went a lot quicker than we thought it would. Um, you could, could you hear the casters? They were like, why are you doing this to us? We want to cast more games. Uh, I felt that Proxima Rudder is my, one of my strongest strategies because I have quite good mi micro and I did it twice because I, he, I, prob I probably thought that he wouldn't expect it twice in mm -hmm. a row, at least on two macro maps, or the first map wasn't a really far rush distance, but on the second map I thought that he would expect a normal expansion. Mm -hmm. Like the casters say, were you also trying to get him out of his comfort zone? Because that's when he's uh, a little more, less stable? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's harder to micro under pressure. Mm -hmm. and then micro, uh, macro under pressure. Mm -hmm. So you're going up to the semifinals in a TVT versus Theovide. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, TVT is my strongest matchup. Uh, I don't know how Theovide plays. Or I saw his match against Mr. X, but he didn't see as strong as I thought that, I, that he would. Uh, so I think it's going to go quite well mm -hmm. against him. Why is TVT your, your best matchup? Uh, I like to play Mick, and Mick is one of my strongest uh, compositions, and TVT allows that. Not to give away any strategies, but can we expect some Mick in your, your semifinals then? Uh, maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Let's not give away any strategies. Um, all right. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back with the third matchup of the day. Thank you so much, and congratulations again.